The redemption of diet breaks? New study up next. What's up guys? We're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about diet breaks. Have they been redeemed? But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. I first started talking about diet breaks all the way back in 2018 when the Matador study got published, which showed really, really promising effects of diet breaks in terms of maintaining resting metabolic rate, preventing metabolic adaptation, and producing better fat loss results. But then over the next five years, quite a few studies came out showing that they didn't really appear to do that much. And on the whole, the evidence kind of looked like it didn't really make a big difference. And that being said, diet breaks can still be very useful. Now, what is a diet break? The more colloquial definition of diet breaks is a period of at maintenance or greater calorie intake for four or more days. So for example, uh, the Matador study did two weeks of dieting and then two weeks at maintenance. And they alternated that in their, in their diet break group versus just continuous energy restriction. Now the title of the paper, I know this is gonna happen because it happened last time, calls it intermittent dieting. And I believe the Matador study referred to it as intermittent energy restriction. And intermittent fasting people jumped all over this one. Aha, see? Intermittent fasting is better. Intermittent dieting and intermittent fasting are not the same thing. Intermittent fasting is where you're timing meals at certain times of the day based on a fasted period, whether it be 16 hours, 20 hours, 24 hours, alternate day fasting, 5-2 diet, whatever you, whatever you wanna do, okay? That is not diet breaks. Diet breaks are something different. Again, a diet break is typically four or more days at maintenance or greater. Now, there's also what are called refeeds. And refeeds are at one to three days of maintenance or greater to break up dieting. With all that, a recent study did a meta-analysis looking at diet breaks and refeeds, trying to determine whether or not they reduced metabolic adaptation. Metabolic adaptation is a reduction in the resting metabolic rate of subjects who are undergoing weight loss beyond what is expected based on the amount of weight they lose. Now, why is that important? Well, if you start out a diet and you're 200 pounds and you diet down to 180 pounds, you have 20 less pounds of mass to walk around with it actually costs you less total energy just to exist because you have less mass. There is a drop in resting metabolic rate from that, but metabolic adaptation is a further drop in metabolic rate beyond that which you would expect from the loss of lean mass. This is thought of as kind of a body's protective mechanism to slow your metabolic rate down, become more efficient so that you have more difficulty starving yourself essentially. So we actually have quite a few studies now that look at either refeeds or diet breaks or whatever have you. And so the authors of this study tried to do a meta-analysis. Now, what were the inclusion criteria? Either study looking at refeeds of one to three days or diet breaks of four plus days versus continuous energy restriction. Basically, staying in an energy deficit throughout the entire course of the diet period. Now, again, these studies had a little bit of heterogeneity in terms of the length of the diet break and whatnot and they had about 12 studies fit their inclusion criteria. And so when they looked at their primary outcome, which was resting metabolic rate, they saw in people who didn't use diet breaks or just did continuous energy restriction, there was about 100 calorie drop in resting metabolic rate. In people who did diet breaks or some sort of intermittent dieting, they saw only about a 50 calorie drop in resting metabolic rate. And the difference was about 45, 50 calories between the continuous energy restriction group and the intermittent dieting group. So all that to say, it looks like based on the summation of the data that diet breaks or refeeds may help with a small preservation of resting metabolic rate. I mean, 50 calories a day is, it's good, but it's, it's not crazy good. Also, some other studies have shown, like the study from Jackson Pios, showed that people who did diet breaks actually had some better exercise performance on the weeks they did the diet breaks. So that may be another reason. Another reason to do diet breaks is adherence. I love doing diet breaks because my schedule is so hectic that if I'm trying to diet to lose fat, it's much more easy for me to stick to a diet on weeks where I'm home, I'm in my normal environment, and then on weeks I travel or weeks I have events on, I can switch to maintenance. So I just kind of structure that around 
my lifestyle personally. Here's where I have a little bit of a question on the methodology of a lot of these studies. I'm not saying this happened because I did not dig into each study specifically, but I have seen this in some studies, which is if you, let's say, do uh, two weeks of dieting, then two weeks of diet break, two weeks dieting, two weeks diet break. It depends on when you're assessing resting metabolic rate. Were they assessing at the end of the two weeks of dieting for both groups or were they assessing at the end of the diet breaks for the diet break group? Because that actually matters. Because we have some studies that do show a transient increase in calories can cause a transient increase in resting metabolic rate. So the question really becomes, are they measuring this stuff apples to apples? And I do wish some of these meta-analysis would look through a little bit more thoroughly about when these measurements are being taken. And I quite frankly wish the studies would do a better job of assessing when they are taking their measurements. So for example, if they did like a six week diet, one diet group is doing diet breaks or refeed, the other one's not. When they get to the end of the study, if they want to assess resting metabolic rate, I would love it if they moved either both groups to a week of maintenance or both groups to a week of energy restriction at the same level of energy restriction because then you can be relatively certain that whatever differences in resting metabolic rate are actually due to long-term changes and long-term differences in metabolic adaptation. But based on the summation of the studies I've seen right now that typically measure just right at the end, it's hard to make that determination because of when they are taking the measurements. Now, again, I'm somebody who, I'm a big fan of diet breaks for adherence, really. If it causes a little bit more preservation of resting metabolic rate, great, but I think the primary reason to do them is if you find it's easier for you to stick to the diet using diet breaks. All right, guys, if you want more information about how to incorporate diet breaks, how to implement them, when it makes sense, try checking out one of our team BioLane coaches. They are very well versed in diet breaks. They know how to use them, they know how to implement them, and they know how to fit them to your own personal needs, dietary preferences, and your goals. So if you're interested in team BioLane coaching, check out the link in the description, and I'll catch you guys next week.